Church, I want to take a few moments today to hopefully have a helpful conversation and to take some next steps out of a very sad reality that's happening in our nation today, really around the world, but that's the rise of anti-Semitism. I'd like to address that from a biblical perspective, maybe walk away with a few things that we can be doing as a follower of Jesus when it comes to this. Anti-Semitism is a form of hatred, racism, bigotry, injustice. Uh, and so this really speaks to all racism of any kind is evil and has no place in the life of a follower of Jesus. Specifically, I want to talk about anti-Semitism and address that from a biblical perspective. In the world today, there are roughly 2.3 billion Christians, 1.9 billion Muslims, 1.2 billion who identify as Hindu of the eight plus billion people in the world. The Jewish population is roughly 16 million. 16 million Jews in, in the world today. That's 0.2% of the population of the world. It's a very small minority. Uh, who is a Jew? A Jew is an individual who is a descendant of, of Abraham, right? Uh, a descendant of the patriarchs of Isaac and, and Jacob. And I would include the secular Jews who may be not practicing the uh, practices of, of Jewish tradition. They, uh, most Jews still partake in some throughout the year, like Hanukkah or Passover, even if they're not going to the synagogue on a weekly basis. 16 million. It's only 0.2% of the population. And so they're descendants of this religious orientation of the Jewish people, the nation of Israel, which was very unique. This is the, the people that God chose to do a work in. Abraham's the founder, uh, the, the father, if you will, of the Jewish people. And God chose to bless the nation of Israel and bless those who, who bless the nation of Israel. We see that from from very beginning, but anti-Semitism is nothing new. This is not a new thought that's risen in the last 100 years. So anti-Semitism has been around for 3,000 years. If you think about the time that they were in Egypt, Jewish people were slaves in Egypt until they they leave Egypt, and then I think of one book of the Bible, in, in particular the book of Esther where there was a decree that all Jewish people would be wiped off the face of the earth. So we wanted to put an end to the Jewish people, the book of Esther. Uh, the Maccabean uh, wars and the Maccabean, the, the history there, they tried to outlaw the Torah, tried to remove all religious distinctions. Uh, there are case after case after case of anti-Semitism throughout the history of the nation of Israel. Most recently, right, we don't have to look very far, where in World War II, two-thirds of the Jewish population was wiped off. Two-thirds of the Jewish population of Europe's Jews were, were killed. But this goes way, way back. And what we need to realize as followers of Jesus is when we give our life to Jesus, we, we become under the umbrella and the lordship of Christ. And by doing so, it puts us at enmity, it puts us at war with the world. You see, there's a cosmic war going on all the time. It's something we need to be aware of. There is there's a spiritual battle happening all around us all the time. When Jesus is taken captive in the garden, Peter pulls out his sword and cuts the ear off of one of the Roman soldiers. And, and in that moment, Jesus says, this is the hour when darkness will reign. And in anti-Semitism and throughout the history, you see there's waves where it increases and it grows and it grows like wildfire throughout the world. And then, the, then there's seasons of peace and it uh, good seasons where you don't see it, you don't hear about it. Uh, doesn't mean it's not happening, but you don't. It's not prevalent right now. It's it's very prevalent. And our culture is a very hospitable culture to non-critical thinking, right? Where I'm, I'm going to hop on the, the latest idea and trend and I'm going to protest and I'm going to riot in the streets. And so we're seeing that happen within college campuses. 
But here's what we've seen throughout history. The persecution of the Jews never ends with the persecution of Jews. So what are some things as a follower of Jesus that we can we can be aware of? Number one, I, I mentioned already, be praying for the peace of Jerusalem. We should be a praying people, be praying for our leaders of, of nations, of our nation, local leaders, um, national leaders. We should be praying for them, praying for wisdom, praying for discernment. If you know Jewish friends, whether they know Jesus is the Messiah or not, reach out to them and let them know that what is happening is not acceptable. You are you, you stand beside our, our Jewish friends, our Jewish neighbors, our Jewish co-workers. So if, if you have them in your life, I would, I would encourage you to reach out and, and let them know that, that we're praying for them. Um, as followers of Jesus, we should be agents of truth. We should seek truth. We should speak truth. Um, and when somebody isn't being truthful, we should address that. And Jesus says we're to be peacemakers. Uh, there are enough troublemakers in the world, and we're told in the Sermon on the Mount to be peacemakers. Um, be peacemakers. I, I would say another thing that we can do is to know our history. And a really important word in Jewish history is remember. Remember. We're to remember what has happened to our Jewish friends in the past. And as much as it depends on us, not allow it to happen again. Imagine a world without the Jewish history. As followers of Jesus, we are our faith is rooted in the Old Testament. It is rooted in the Hebrew Torah. It is rooted in the Hebrew Bible. It is rooted in the traditions and the culture. Jesus was not the first Christian. He was a Jew. He, did, he never had the New Testament, right? New Testament, which was written by all but Luke, were, they were all Jewish writers. And we've been grafted in, the Bible tells us, into the, with the Jewish people. So this is a really important element to a follower of Jesus, our, our Old Testament. Imagine a world without Psalms. Imagine a world without the Proverbs. Imagine a world without the Ten Commandments. I mean, the influence of Judeo values around the world is so significant. And we're to pray for our Jewish friends and we're to remember what's happened. Not that long ago, um, there was a German soldier in World War II who was a U-boat commander, actually. And once he recognized what was happening and the theology of, of Hitler, he... He protested that, and as a result, he was thrown into prison. And you may have heard this quote, but this quote comes from, from him. His name is Martin Niemöller. He spent eight years in a German prison, was ultimately released at the end of the war, 1938 to 1945, he was in prison in Germany. And he says this, first they came for the socialists, but I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. And then they came for the union workers, but I did not speak out because I was not a union worker. And then they came for the Jews, but I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. And then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. Martin Nemour, who after prison eventually becomes a pastor. One of my heroes of the faith is... Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was a pastor in Germany, fled to the States uh, to teach in a seminary and then eventually goes back during World War II to speak out against what was happening to the Jewish people. And he was ultimately martyred for his faith. He was killed in a, a Nazi prison camp. Uh, there's a book um, I, I strongly recommend reading uh, about his, his life. Um, these are the things that I would encourage us to take action, take steps, to pray, to reach out to our Jewish friends, uh, to defend truth, and to remember, remember what's happened throughout the history of our Jewish brothers and sisters. Uh, I'm going to invite you to pray with me as I pray for our Jewish friends. And, and this is true, listen, this is true for all people. We are told to love God 
and to love people, all people of every background, of every race, of every religious orientation. We are to pray for them. We are to love them. Uh, we are to pray for those who persecute us. We are to pray for our enemies. Listen, we're not just to love those who love us and are nice to us and kind to us. We're to, we're to pray for every person. And racism and bigotry have no place in the life of a follower of Jesus. And so, Father, we pause to remember the heritage that even as a follower of Jesus that we have within the Old Testament, within the Jewish culture. We're to pray for the salvation of the Jewish people, that they would come to know Jesus as their Messiah. Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I pray for people who are caught up in the conflict. God, we love people. And there's no one on this planet who is not made in the image of you. And so we pray for peace. We pray for those who are caught in the injustices that are happening to the Palestinian people, to the Jewish people, to the nations that surround uh, Israel there. We, we pray for Israel. We pray for Jerusalem. God, I pray for my friends, who Jewish friends who I have, that I will reach out to them. I pray that we would speak for truth. I pray that we would remember the history of the Jewish people. And God, we know that this is a spiritual battle. Uh, it is important for us to be aware of that. that. God, you are not done with the nation of Israel and the Jewish people. And so we pray for their salvation. We pray that they would see Jesus as the Messiah. I pray you would give us wisdom as we live our lives, as we interact day to day with people um, who are like us and people who are not like us, that we would, we would love you, God, and we would love people. We would know, be known as people who love and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I trust that this is helpful. We'll, we'll pray for this situation uh, this coming weekend in services. Uh, take care.